Here we're going to be covering things like subqueries, creating new tables, adding columns, inserting data into those columns, dropping tables, working with dates, and casting data types to be the data type that we need it to be in. So we can go ahead and get started. Okay, so first we're going to start with subqueries. So a subquery is basically a query nested inside another query. It can be used in a couple of different places. I most often are using them after the from in a select statement, and I'm using it as though it's another table. Like I'm creating basically a query that creates a table the way I want it, and then I'm selecting from that table. But it could also be used in a where statement, and you can use comparison operators on um, with subqueries as well. So greater than, less than, those comparison operators. All right, so let's head back over to the SQL browser and look at an example of a subquery. All right, so we are going to go back to one of our older examples where we had been looking at the dupes in our customer table using a having statement, right? So this gave me back all of the customer IDs for people who had more than one entry in the customer table. So now, I could say, select max customer ID from, and it would give me the, the largest customer ID that had more than one entry in the database. Okay, so, and that's customer 343,491. Okay, and you notice that I had to use a subquery here because in the original, in the subquery, it had a having statement, which meant that it needed a group by statement. And if I'm grouping by customer ID, then I'm getting a row for each customer ID. And here I wanted just one output. And that output is just the maximum customer ID. So I need to do that function on top of that other query. And so that is when you need to use subqueries. All right, now a super important topic, dates in SQL. So SQLite actually doesn't have an extensive offering for working with date times. Other SQL servers offer things like date part, date diff, that are built-in functions that allow you to say, take the date part being the month, and it just gives you the month, or um, date diff, and you give two dates, and it gives you the difference. And so although we have some of these functions, it's not as straightforward, and there's not as many options available to us as there are in other SQL servers. Although SQL typically isn't case sensitive, when we're trying to extract the year from our dates, we do need to use a capital Y, so that's worth calling out. Um, and like I already said, uh, dates are super important for being able to look at trends over time. So we're back to our SQL browser. So I can... select date now and run it. And so today when I'm actually recording, it is December 30th, 2018. And so that is correct. Uh, and the syntax may be a little bit different in other SQL servers, but that's like a really easy question to just type, you know, if I was looking for how to work with date times in Postgres SQL, I'd just type date times Postgres and I'd get the SQL documentation. Also Stack Overflow um, has really examples on everything that you'd ever wanna ask and they're pretty, 
they're the answers are pretty good. So so you should be good. But basically, any SQL Server is going to have this functionality, and then. I can, so remember, we have times in the build services table. Let's just take another look at that. Okay, so we'll work with the order dates here. In SQLite, they actually use a function called strift time percent day and the order date. And I'll call that and I'll call that day of month. And I also want to get back the order date so that we can check that what we're getting back is correct. And I'll just look for the first 40 of those. So we get back, so we see that this is November 21st, and the variable that we created that just extracts the day that we call day of the month is saying that the day of the month in that date is the 21st. And so we can look down and conclude that this is giving us the correct, correct responses. We can do the same thing for the other ones as well. So if we want to get the month of the year, then we're just going to write the same function, but with a percent %m, and that's going to extract the month for us. Okay, and so see, we see November, we see May, we see September, and that is exactly what we wanted. Now that we know how to get the parts out from a date, we're gonna write a query as though we were gathering data for a time series analysis. So in the build services table, they have the amount paid. So let's write, so we have the amount paid. And so if we wanted to know the amount we received each month for build services so that we could look at the trends over time, we'd want to get the sum of paid, right? And then we'd want, if we were going by month and year, And because we're getting multiple columns, let's start using um, better formatting for our queries because if you're asking for more than just a couple columns, it starts to become very difficult to read if you're not formatting your queries nicely. And that's not nice to other people that might need to read your queries. So we're going to get the month that's percent %m, and we were calling that month of year, and we need to get the year. So that's year of service. So we're gonna select the sum of the amount paid, the month and the year, uh, from the build services table and then we're going to need to group by this month and the year and this is a case where order by really helps us out, right? Because we want to not have it go 2013, 2015 in a way that just doesn't make sense. So we are going to run this selection. And now we know that the very first month that we have 
build services was September of 2015. And we know that the total amount paid was 898. And we see that we made more money in February. That seems to be a particularly high one. We did well in February, March, and April. And then we went back down for a while. And then the following February, we seem to be making more money again. But here we're also doing well in August, September, and October of 2017. And then these numbers all look quite large as well. So this may be that all of a sudden we started pushing build services or different campaigns we're running, but we'd be able to look at that over time and see if there's patterns and then also take into consideration when the company was pushing those build services extra hard and get an idea for for what the average build service typically looks like, given the fact that there's gonna be seasonality in this data, right? Like you assume that people may need these services, maybe, you know, I don't know anything in particular about this service, but a lot of times coming close to Christmas, people really ramp up in their own promotions that they're doing, and so the company may have been pushing services harder, or maybe it is for people who are going to visit trade shows and there's a trade show season. Seasonality for different businesses will look different depending on where you are, but this is how you'd go about starting to analyze that data. All right, so that is the beginning of working with date times. This is going to come back again when we start feature engineering, but for right now, we'll just stop here with dates. All right, now we're at creating new tables. Uh, this is great because this is something that's really easy to do. It's really useful for when you wanna be able to create a table so that you can query it later and this shouldn't take us long to cover at all. You'll typically have permissions to create your new tables or tables of your own, but those will go in the sandbox. There are a couple different ways that you can create new tables. So you could specify, you could do create table and then give the column name and the variable type, but you also have the opportunity to just say create table, give a table name as, and it'll assume the data types for you, which is way easier. Another thing to note though, is if your table that you created isn't constantly being refreshed, you may want to build a model in R or Python at a point in time, but often you'll want to use new data each time the model is rerun. And so the easier way to do that rather than creating a table and then pulling that table into Python or R would just be to put the whole SQL query in Python or R. And so whenever it's run, it would take data that was new as of the last time the database was refreshed, which may have been a couple seconds ago, it might have been the night before. But so there's a couple ways to think about it, but still I love creating tables after I've written a query so that I know that that table is in the database. And if somebody else wants to use a table that I created, I can just send them the name of the table rather than having to send them a whole query. All right, so let's get into a clean window. Okay, so basically we have this query that we've written before. It was to select the year and the order date from build services. So let's take a look at what this was. It was just the year that the order was made and that year came right from the order date. This isn't super useful, but it's an okay example to show you how you create a table Literally, I write a query that works for me, has all the things that I want in it, and then I'm just going to write create table Kristen new t 
table. That's the name that I'm giving to my table. And I'm going to say as, and then I run this. And I get nothing returned, right? Because there's no result for it to return. All it did was create a new table. So now I can query that table. If I went and I just typed select star from Kristen new table, I'm going to get my results because there's a table that's been created that's called Kristen new table that has that information in there. Very cool, right?